Hello, friends, and thank you as always for visiting the Legend Sports Universe YouTube channel, Legend Sports Universe, where legends play forever. We come to you live from Bush Stadium in St. Louis, where the St. Louis Cardinals will host the Milwaukee Brewers. The Brewers have scuffled out of the gate 6 and 14 to open things up. The Cardinals looking for a return to the NLCS, obviously with a long way to go ahead of them, will also try to get Bob Gibson right here. Gibson, one of the big stories in this league over the first two years. Gibson has been ordinary during the regular season, but has been a spectacular postseason pitcher, pitching to the capabilities that you would expect of Bob Gibson. But the regular season has been a scuffle, and that has been the case so far this year. He's 2-2, two and two, but you'll note 5.79. Now, that has been one very good start, one mediocre start, and two bad starts. Gibson not walking many, but he has been hittable. 27 hits and 23 and a third. Gibson will look to get things right on a beautiful day here in St. Louis. And he's got a good lineup to do it against because the Brewers have done nothing early. Here's Paul Molitor. Molitor batting 235 as we prepare to get underway from St. Louis. First pitch from Gibson. Molitor swinging early. Skies it out to center. Coming on. It's a long run for Edmonds, but he'll get there. Puts it away for out number one, and we're underway. Your Brewers lineup. Molitor, Vina, and Fielder. Thomas, Gount, and Felipe Alou acquired during the offseason from Atlanta. George Scott, Carlos Gomez, and Jonathan Lucroy. The Brewers have a 281 on base percentage through the first three weeks of this third year of the FSBL. Vina swings first pitch as well. He fouls it off. Gibson rocks and fires. Big curveball there. Vina lines it. It's off the glove. Backed up nicely. Good play there by, I believe that's Hornsby, playing second base today. He DHs against lefties. Tommy Edmond plays second. But that's a nice play by Hornsby. A ball off the glove of a leaping Johnny Mize. And there's two away. Here's Prince Field. High fastball, just a bit up in the zone. It's one and up. Gibson rocks and fights. Fastball misses down low. It's two and up. Comes inside. Fielder skies it to right. It's carrying a bit, but it'll stay in the park put away and the side is retired so one two three inning for gibson now it'll be up to the cardinals to get things going in the bottom half brandon woodruff takes the mound and woodruff has been horrendous in the early going career era a touch over three for woodruff but this season owen three a 6.63 earned run average he has been eminently hittable 26 hits and 19 innings of work. He will try to get his ship corrected here against the Cardinals as our good friend Beatles Eternally tunes in. How are you, buddy? Good to see you. I hope all is well with you. First pitch fastball misses outside to Ozzy Smith. And you see the Brewers 6 and 14. Out of the gate. Ozzy. Dunks one down the left field line, but that'll go foul and out of play. And a nice fastball there down low. Smith swings over the top of it. It's one and two. Ground ball up the middle. Backhanded by Vina. Throw to first. And there's one away. Big clue in the house. How are you, my friend? It is great to see you. Little morning, early afternoon baseball here. Your Cardinals lineup, Smith, Drew, and Hornsby. 
Mize, Edmonds, and Ripper Collins, Boyer, Lankford, and Yadi Molina. Round things out for St. Louis. Woodruff delivers, fastball outside, it's 1-0. J.D. Drew, good start for the season, 275, three homers, 11 RBIs. The Cardinals have a surplus in the outfield, and it's kind of a rotation. Edmonds is locked in in center, but with the draft of Chick Haffey in the last rookie draft, Haffey made the big club out of spring training. So Haffey, Langford, Drew, and Brian Jordan kind of cycling through the corners in the outfield to this point. Malou puts that one away for out number two. And here's Rogers Hornsby, and Hornsby is off to a fantastic start. 364, eight homers, 16 RBIs for Hornsby. Been the best second baseman in the National League for two years, and this is the best start that he's had. Puts that one down to third, fielded by Molitor, throws over to first, and the side is retired. So the Cardinals go in order. That's a good start for Brandon Woodruff, who's desperately needed it. We'll head to the top of the second. Thomas, Gount, and Olu do up for the Brewers. Brewers <laughs> sputtered out of the gate. 53 years later, they're still sputtering. Well, they're, yeah, they've had they've had a rough go to start here. Here's Gorman Thomas, Storman Gorman, only batting 211. He's got three homers and five RBIs. Brewers have gotten pretty much nothing out of anybody except Robin Yount to this point. Fastball misses up high. You see the infield, Boyer, Smith, Hornsby, and Mize around the horn. That is a wallet infield for the Cardinals. Fastball away, it's 2-0. Remember, the Cardinals led Game 7 of the NLCS last year. 6-0 over the Giants. Let it get away from them. The Giants went on to win Game 7 and become the eventual World Series champions. Cardinals looking for a return. Hoping for a climb to finish the job. Tapper down to third. Boyer charges. Barehanded play. Nice play, Ken Boyer. Throws the first. Thomas is retired. There's one away. 007 in the house. How are you, my friend? Good to see you. Hope all is well with you, sir. <laughs> Big Clue taking his shot at Bud Sealy. Because really, why not? Here's Robin Yount. As we mentioned, Yount, the only bright spot in the early going for the Brewers. 338 out of the game. Ass ball up and in. Swung on and missed. Kenny Jansen gets the home plate umpire duties for the best fictional umpire crew in the business. Gibson rocks and deals. Slider fouled off by Yount. It's one and one. One and two. Apologies. Nice slider down and away. It's two and two. Yeah. Jam shot. Looper to left. Coming on is Langford. He'll get there. Puts it away, and there's two away. Kind of see what it's doing with Rob. I think it just said that Robin Yount was wearing 10, and there's no logical reason. Robin Yount to be wearing number 10. There have been a couple of uniform glitches as far as uniform numbers that I've noticed this season. They put McCovey back to 45 instead of 44, but I was able to correct that one. But I cannot get Alan Trammell's number three to stick for the Tigers. I don't know why. Uh, you know, he's programmed to play the, all the guys are programmed to play the right numbers. I promise you that. Um, but for some reason, it keeps on sticking Trammell with nine, and I'm not sure why it's doing that. Now it looks like they've messed with Yount's number, so I'll go in and try to fix that after this game is over. But it's really weird, because usually if there's like a duplicate number, obviously you can't have two guys with the same number, but there's a duplicate number, it goes to the next highest number, so I don't know why it would give him 10 instead of 19. Here's Felipe Alou, acquired from the Braves in the offseason trade. Alou turns this one around. It's foul. 
That trade was a little bit surprising. Alou, not a bad player for the Braves over the first two years of the FSPL. Breaking ball away, Alou gets a piece to stay alive. Three two offering coming from Gibson. And Alou dunks this one down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Drew's going to get to it quickly. Alou makes the turn, though. He's going to go for second anyway. Drew's throw is offline. And Felipe Alou has a two-out blue double down the right field line, his second double of the season. As our good friend Aaron Reed pops into the chat. How are you, Aaron? Good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. And a little bit of a crowd here for some day baseball. We like that. So Gibson will be frustrated about that one. And now here's George Scott. Scott batting 235. Change up, down and away. It's 0-1. One. one homer, six RBIs so far for Scott. Both of these teams looking up right now at the scalding hot Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates lead the division 17 and 5. I believe is their mark at this point. They won their first nine. They've settled down a little bit since then, but still. The Pirates just kind of clicking on all cylinders. They've lead the National League in batting average and in ERA. That's a good way to get yourself a division lead. Scott skies it out to left. Lankford gives chase. He'll get there. Puts it away. And the side is retired. So Gibson allows the two-out double but gets out of it. We'll head to the bottom of the second in St. Louis. Mize, Edmonds, and Collins do up for the Cardinals. We're scoreless. Here's Johnny Mize, 288, two homers, seven runs batted in for the Cardinals' first baseman. Yeah, Beatles, man, your, your guys have been great. But one thing, I mean, the pitching staff is certainly overperforming. But one thing about the pitching staff, they don't walk anybody. So they're not beating themselves, you know, a lot. I mean, I know the pitching staff have outperformed a little bit last year. And then they added Deacon Philippe this year. Um... But Ed Morris is having another good year. Bill B. Swift is having another good year. Um, Babe Adams, who wasn't great last year, is off to a good start. But they're not, they're not allowing free passes, and they don't have a ton of power on offense, but everybody's hitting for average right now. So they're just they're getting a good job done here. Mize drives this one deep to left center. That's going back. It's out of here. Home run Johnny Mize, his third of the year. And the Cardinals strike first. It's one nothing St. Louis. Fireworks aplenty in the St. Louis sky. Mines goes yard to left center. <laughs> yeah, Mines was a great, great player. Look at some of the seasons he put up. He was just remarkably consistent. And he's, yeah, he's, he's been very good here in, um, you know, in franchise stars, too. He had a rough postseason. That is good. But overall, he's certainly been very solid. Speaking of solid, Jim Edmonds riding a 16-game hitting streak, batting 329, six homers, 15 ribbies. The shot, Edmonds hits it hard on the ground to second, but Vina has it. Throws him out for out number one. Batting six, the designated hitter. Yeah, that's kind of absurd. I mean, how do you not vote Johnny Mize? Here's Ripper Collins, 245, three homers, five RBIs. Collins, one of the unsung heroes for this Cardinal squad over the first two years. He has just been a very solid offensive play Woodruff tries to get back on track here that one is hit hard but right at me yeah? Collins is thrown out and there's two away George Scott's 
first base job here with the Brewers is a bit tenuous. They drafted Cecil Cooper. Last year, Cooper down in the minors at the moment, but expect him to get a call at some point before this season is over. Here's Ken Boyer, 266, six homers, 12 RBIs. There's a high fly ball to the left. That one's hooking. It's going to go out of play as a foul ball. Boyer, of course, a fantastic season a year ago. 330, 30 homers. Just an outstanding mark for Boyer. One and one to count. There's a high fly ball. That one will stay fair, but I don't think it has the distance. A lose under it puts it away. And the side is retired. So the Cardinals get on the board. There's our uniform glitch in midseason form. Johnny Mize for the Cardinals goes yard. His third homer of the year, solo shot, puts the Cardinals up 1-0. Sherry McGee. Sherry McGee had a 6-RBI game on 007's birthday broadcast that I did here. The back Cole Hamels in his debut. He has been terrific. Oh, Clue, that uniform, that uniform glitch has been around for three years, man. I don't know what causes it, but yeah, it goes to that placard, and it'll it'll randomly show guys in the opposing team's uniform sometimes. It's just one of those things, like, for a game that's as great as this game is, and it really is, how does that not get caught during testing? I just, I don't, I don't understand it. Here's Carlos Gomez. Gomez batting 206. <laughs> hey, Dave, go and then will be the show and fix their game for them. Here's Jonathan Lucroy on the on deck circle. Um, oh, wait, Clue, I missed his own. You is, uh, what did you ask? Is Jamie Navarro on the group group? He actually is. I don't think he's, I don't remember off the top of my head if he's with them now, but he's in their pool. The catcher. Number one. So Gomez is on. He's a threat to steal. Here's Lucroy. Slider is in there for a strike. 238, three homers, four RBIs. Well, again, the thing that kills me most about the show is that they got rid of year-over-year -year saves, which is just such a a slap in the face to modders. So I never bought, I never picked up the show 23. I don't really have any plans on picking up the show 24 either. Uh, slider is in there for a call strike. It's 0 2. So, I mean, I certainly don't plan on rebuilding. I'm not going to go buy a new game to rebuild this league, especially now that I'm in the third year of it. I get what I need to out of, out of this game. So, I don't put more money in their pockets for them to crap on the mod community. Not something that I feel compelled to do. Good slider there from Gibson. That's the pitch. Luke Roy, no chance on that one. An 89 mile an hour slider bites out of the zone, and Luke Roy will go grab a seat. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, you know, look, I, I'm. You know, I, I love doing this, and I have no regrets of buying this game, but I certainly will not keep putting money in, in their pocket for, you know, when they when they do that stuff. It's just, it, it, it just, it defies logic. Like, I know it's, again, just look, and I say this about Madden, too, and I won't go too, off, too far off the broadcasting realm of this, but, you know, Madden makes it so hard. And it's one of the reasons why I'm so drained was developing that Madden project. Um, as Gomez swipes second, throw from Molina, nowhere near in time. Gomez, that's the first steal of the year for Carlos Gomez. That's more a function of the fact that he hasn't gotten on base at all. But um, they really do make it very hard. And the franchise mode and the roster making are so disjointed from each other in that game. Um they really just make it really, really hard for modders to do what they do. But if you go to that community vault, there are, like, I think it's 20, more than 20,000 files available for download. Like, you can't 
why are you not making it easier for the people who try to make your game better? I, I just, I just, I don't understand it. I don't know what the numbers are in the in the current MLB The Show Vault, but it's still the same kind of thing. Like I know it's not your cash cow, but man, they're also just they're missing the boat. They're you know that guys who are our age and guys in the sports simulation and replays community and digital dice and stuff like that. We're a little bit older than you guys who are usually playing the show. That's fine. But bringing these guys to life, like, if you make it possible to do that, you will get those people into this game because the game itself is outstanding. And I don't know why they don't get that and why they don't embrace it. It just, it, it, it makes it crazy to me. It just... I don't know. Like I said, I I know I I use this game differently than most, and that's and that's fine. But I just feel like the mod community as a whole gets no support from the games that they develop the mods for. Slider misses down and in. As I'll conclude my rant for the time being. Two and zero oh count to Vina. Two outs. Gomez on second. Guide shallow center. Tough play. Ozzy going out. Edmonds coming in. Ozzy will get underneath it. Puts it away. And the side is retired. So once again, the Brewers get a runner on second, but can't get him around. We'll head to the bottom of the third. one nothing Cardinals. Dan Burke in the house. How are you, Dan? Sorry I missed you slip in there, buddy, but I hope all is well with you. Thank you for tuning in. So here's Ray Langford, 311, a homer and two RBIs. It's Langford, at least for the moment, holding on to that left field slot against right-handed pitching. Chick Happy waiting to take over that spot full time, but the rookie right now has to wait in a platoon situation. As long as Langford performs, that's what they'll do. Langford skies out to Gomez for out number one. Here's Yadi Molina, 231, neither a homer nor an RBI for Yadi. He's been splitting a bit of time with Walker Cooper. He's gotten some decent playing time in the early going. Owen won the count as Woodruff looks in. Her ball, that looked like a good pitch, but doesn't get the high bender. It's one and one. Fastball inside, two and one the count. Enough fouls this one off. Count goes to two and two. That one is fouled off. Molina fly ball. Shallow left. Coming on is a loo. He'll get there. Puts it away for out number two. Well, that's the thing, Dan. I'm like, I, I, I know that's the cash cow for Sony. Like, I, I get it. I get that, you know, the, the tax thing is big, and it's mostly the audience younger than me, you know, who are playing the game. Like, I, I, I get that. But I don't think it would take much for them to be a bit more receptive and a bit more supportive of the mod community. You can do a custom league online, for example. Do you have any idea how cool it would have been if I could have it, to be able to create something like Field of Dreams for this. Fictional teams, fictional logos with the real players put into the same pool. I could do the player part of it, but it won't even let you create a custom size league. Like, why would you limit that as Ozzy grounds back to the mound to get us through the third? We head to the top of the fourth here in St. Louis. It's one nothing Cardinals, part of the Brewers' order, coming up against Gibson. NBA 2K, I can download a logo of any kind from online and upload it into their vault and then use it in my, in my league. I have the... When I did the basketball league, I did the 
website address and my logo for the Legend Sports Universe was on all of the custom basketball courts I created. I dropped the Pro Strategy Football logo onto the courts back when I was doing stuff for Pro Strategy Football on the basketball courts to help out that game. I put it on the courts. I created all the custom logos. I had Amazon and Nike sponsorships and everything. Like, give us that. Let us create the world we want to create within your game. It doesn't change playability. It doesn't change. It doesn't ask you to do anything huge. But it's right there for you, and you don't do it. And it's just it, it, that kind of thing. Is just it's it, like Clue said. It's myopic. It's just short sightedness, and it would open up a whole new group of people. Oh, and to the count here is Gibson works to Thomas, as I apparently lied about ending my rant. Free baseball fan, our friend Tim checks in. How are you, Tim? Fastball there is fouled off. Well, it's funny you talk about that with the, with the licensing, and certainly the Monopoly has something to do with it. But I have, I have said this for ages. I've said this back since EA got the exclusive um, licensing for the NFL. Screw the Major League licensing. Screw the NFL licensing. Uh, uh, completely disregard it. The one thing, it'll let you sell your game for less money. Create the game and just make it as customizable as possible. The mod community will do the rest. EA's and um, 2K's football game was a better game than Madden. And I've been able to get Madden to play very nicely now, but it took a ton of work, and I'm still tweaking. Um, but 2K's game, football game back in the day was a better game than Madden was. And it pushed Madden to be a better game because it was a, because it was a better game. Madden now has rested on its laurels for ages because there's nobody to challenge it. If 2K created a football game with the old engine that they had and updated graphics and just embraced the mod community, customization, you would have rosters for every season. And especially in football, the guys have the helmets on. The faces in Madden look horrendous. Beatles knows this. We joked about this when he saw, you know, Terry Bradshaw, the face I had to give Terry Bradshaw, making him look like a garden gnome. It was the best available face, you know. But the faces are horrible. But they have helmets on, so you can cover it in football. Even more so than baseball. Just let the mod community take care of it. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't infringe on anything with it because they wouldn't have the NFL license, and the roster creators would go to town with it. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> yes, that was awful. I mean, it was the best option I could pick for Terry Bradshaw, but it looks nothing like him. Like, I, I, you know, I'm just glad he gets to keep his helmet on most of the time. Fastball misses up high. It's three and two. Woodruff wanted that pitch, but that was the ball. Well, like I said, Aaron, like, I... I've gotten Madden to play really well, but it's also taken me a ton of work. It shouldn't really require that. It shouldn't require me to have put the time in I've had to put into that project. Um, skied out here to Gorman Thomas for the first out in the bottom of the fourth. But yeah, Madden, absolutely. And they come up with things that don't matter, or they... The best is they wipe out things, and then they bring them back and call it a new feature, and they think that you don't notice. It's just, you know, again, this was the first time that I've delved into a Madden project. That's why I bought Madden 24, but I won't buy Madden 25. Uh, there's, 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 there's really no logical reason for me to, especially because they don't let you do year over year saves either. You know, paying $60 for a roster update, especially when I don't even play current rosters, doesn't really make a heck of a lot of sense for me. 2-0 the count here as Woodruff works the horns. At some point I'll do a separate 
stream ranting about all this stuff instead of doing it in the middle, in the middle of a game broadcast. But Hornsby beats that one out. Fenian knocks it down, but is unable to get him. Hornsby is on. A one-out infield single. And here's Johnny Mines. Fastball off the plate. It's one and off. Mines accounting for the game's only run at this point. A solo homer back in the second. And Mize, deep to right field, he's done it again. Mize crushes that one from Woodruff. It's a two-run shot for Mize, his fourth of the year, his second of the game, and it's 3-0 St. Louis. Johnny Mize unloads. Todd B comes in just in time to watch it leave the yard. And Mize teed off. I don't know where this one landed. But it may have been in the Mississippi. Absolutely crushed by Mize. Down the tunnel. That was out of here. Literally. So now it's 3 nothing Cardinals. Here's Edmonds. We'll see if they start getting some bullpen action up for Woodruff. Although Woodruff has fared okay, except for dealing with Mines. Edmonds grounded out his first time up. Fastball misses down low. It's 2-0. Brewers have scored one run over the first two games of this series, and now it's almost two and a half games. Edmonds lines it in the center, and that's a base hit. Thomas ranges over, cuts it off. Edmonds takes the turn at first, but he'll hold. So Woodruff's early season struggles continuing. Edmonds extends his hitting streak to 17. Edmonds, a sensational year one of the FSBL. A solid year two. He toned it down a bit, but still had a fine year. Off to a good start here in year three. Here's Ripper Collins. Fastball at the knees for strike one. Collins grounded out his first time up. Fly ball, left center. That ball is hit well. That's going to split the gap. One hopper, it's off the top of the wall. It's going to stay in the park, so the Cardinals get a benefit there. I thought that was going to be a ground rule double, but it doesn't quite clear the wall. It's an RBI double for Collins. Edmonds comes around to score, and it is 4-0 St. Louis. And the Brewers just continue to have a rough go here in the early season. Here's Ken Boyer. Boyer is 0-1. Fastball at the knees for strike one. As the Beatles rightly notes, Johnny Mize, the original big cat. Andres Galarraga was not a bad player. He was by no means Johnny Mize. Fastball from Woodruff. Boyer fouls it off, and the count goes to 0 and 2. Woodruff shakes off Lupre. And delivers. High fastball. Boyer tries to hold up. They punch him out. And that'll be the second out. First strikeout for Woodruff. Here with two outs now in the fourth. Left fielder, Ray Lang. So here comes Langford. Langford is 0 for 1. Fastball is in there for a called strike. So the Cardinals spotting Gibson a 4 nothing lead here now in the fourth. Gibson has let a couple runners in the scoring position, but has not let anybody come around as Gibson tries to get his regular season on track. He really has been just a remarkable story here. The storylines of the, of the first three years of the FSBL. Bob Gibson ranks pretty high on that list as he has been very ordinary during the regular season. I think his career ERA is like 4.2 something. 
And then the postseason comes, and Bob Gibson is Bob Gibson. I got to compile all those stats because it doesn't let it doesn't save them in the player card. Um, but Gibson's postseason ERA is definitely below two. So he's flipped the switch under the big lights as Langford with a horrific swing there goes down. So Woodruff gets a pair of K's in the inning, but the Cardinals get three runs. Mize goes deep again. We head to the top of the fifth. It's 4-0 St. Louis. Here's Felipe Alou. Alou doubled his first time up. Again, Alou acquired in an offseason trade with the Braves. Sent Larry Sorensen and I believe somebody else to Atlanta. A little bit of a peculiar trade just because Larry Sorensen is not going to crack that Braves rotation by any stretch. Dale Murphy is now going to play center every day, so I think the Braves are probably putting Wally Berger out in left field a little bit. And Lou became expendable at that point. It's hit for some pop, low on base percentage. Over the first two seasons. Gibson fastball rides inside, Lou fouls it straight back. Take our first look at the out of town scoreboard. In the Breaking ball there, chopped down to third. Room service hop for Boyd. Throws him out. There's one away. Now batting the first baseman, George Scott. So that'll bring up George Scott. Scott over one. He lined out his first time up. He's now one for eight in the series. Scott drops this one in the right field. It'll fall in front of Drew. The one-out single for Scott here in the top of the fifth. So we head out of town. We head to Baltimore where the Orioles lead the Twins 3-0. Ned Garver looking for his first win against Johan Santana. Blue Jays over the Red Sox 3-0 in the fifth. Jose Bautista is driven in a run for Toronto. White Sox over the defending champion Giants who are not playing great out of the gate here. Rue Marquardt and Ted Lyons, a good pitching matchup there in Chicago. Angels up 1-0 on the Indians. Mike Napoli is driven in a run there for the Angels. Tigers up 4-0 on the Royals in the eighth from Tiger Stadium. Norm Cash, 3-4 with a pair of RBIs for Detroit. Yankees up 3-0 on the Mariners in the second. Charlie Keller has hit a three-run shot for the Yankees. Marlins up 2-0 on the Cubs in the 8th. Marlins getting a good pitching performance there. Hanley Ramirez is driven in a run. Reds and Pirates tied at 2 at Forbes in the 5th. George Foster is driven in a run for the Reds in that one. Phillies up 4-1 on the Expos in Philadelphia in the 5th. Nick Johnson has gone yard for Montreal. Chuck Klein has hit his 6th homer of the year for the Phillies. Dodgers up 2-0 on the Mets in the 8th as Gomez goes down. Sandy Koufax and Noah Syndergaard locked up in a good one there at Shea. Rockies up 1-0 on the Diamondbacks in the 2nd in Colorado. Matt Holliday has hit his 6th home run of the year for the Rockies. Padres up 1-0 on the Braves in the 2nd. Harry Kennedy is driven in the lone run in the game in that one. Fastball from Gibson in for a called strike here to Lucroy, who struck out his first time. Up. Gibson from the set. Lucroy, high fly ball, hit out to right center. That's carrying pretty well. Drew's going back on it. At the track, puts it away. Nice play, J.D. Drew. And the side is retired. Fred Bird does his little funky chicken dance. Don't insult him by calling him a chicken, I suppose. Near midway through, here in St. Louis, it's 4-0 Cardinals as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Here's Yadi Molina. Molina is 0 for 1. A little surprised Woodruff is still in. Again, I know Johnny Mize has done pretty much all the damage, but even so, Woodruff's starting to... He has given up four runs over four. 
Ground ball to short. Yount has it on the backhand for his first. And there's one away. Montreal Expos having a rough go out of the gate. 7-15. and 15. The Expos, a playoff team in each of the first two seasons, might be seeing that run come to an end. Bernie Strom in the house. How are you, Bernie? It's good to see you, sir. I hope you are having a fine day. Ozzy loops one out in the center. Coming on, Storm and Gorman Thomas puts it away for out number two. Now that is the right I'm surprised field. that the Padres have Jimmy. been able to play 500 ball early on in the season. I won't expect that to keep up, but... Padres relying on a pair of Negro League pitchers taken in their rookie drafts to lead them. Nip Winters and Dave Brown lead that rotation right now. Nice backhand by Molitor. Long throw. It's going to pull Scott off the bat. And that'll be an infield hit for J.D. Drew. Nice play there from Molitor. But the throw will pull Scott off the bag. Got to think that's going to be an infield hit. It's also going to be the end of the day for Brandon Woodruff. So Woodruff fails to make it through the fifth. Johnny Mize victimizes him with a pair of home runs. And now the Brewers will go to their bullpen to try to keep this game in striking Your distance. Attention, please. Now Here's Bill Castro. Castro will make his 11th appearance of the year. 4.20 earned run average. He's got no record. As of this moment. So the Brewers bullpen will be tasked with getting them to the finish line here. Castro with a rough task of facing Rogers Hornsby, who's one for two. First pitch swing. Hornsby rips one down to third. Molitor dives, knocks it down. Hornsby beats it out. Good effort there from Molitor. That's the second infield base hit for Hornsby. Now he's just got to hit one that Yount can't handle and will have gone around the horn on it. Molitor saves an extra base hit there. But Hornsby is on. Two men on for Johnny Mines. Two for two, a solo shot, and a two-run shot. Six for nine, four RBIs in the series for Johnny Mines. Astro delivers. Fastball down and in. It's 2-0. Oh. Don't want to load the bases here, but you got to think Castro's going to navigate Mize a bit carefully. 2-0 oh pitch. Mize goes after it. Slices it the other way. That's a long run. It's tailing away. It's going to fall in. Ground rule double for Mize. He'll drive in another run with that. It bounces out of play. So runner will have to hold at third. But that's now five RBIs on the game for Johnny Mize. It's 5 nothing St. Louis. Sorry, four RBIs on the game for Mize. Fastball in there for a called strike to Edmonds. Johnny Mize is taking control of this game. Bob Gibson... We'll buy him a steak dinner when this one is done. Change up misses away. It's one and one. <laughs> My shutting out the Brewers. High fastball there. Edmund skies at the center. That'll stay in the yard. Thomas puts it away. And the side is retired. But another Mize RBI. Even though I, technically that ball left the park too. Not a homer, but still. We head to the top of the sixth. Five nothing Cardinals in control here at Bush. Here's Paul Molitor. See, it's changed Molitor's number two. All right, we're going to have to go through and do a little bit of a, a uniform number check on these two teams when the game is over. The ounce number has changed. JD Drew is wearing the wrong number two. And he's worn the right number for two years, so I don't know what would have happened that would have changed that. But we'll go through and touch it up as we go. Gibson looking for the call there doesn't get it. One and one the count as he works to Molly. 
fastball at the knees. It's one and two. Nice little daytime baseball crowd here, guys. I appreciate you tuning in. I would kindly ask you to bang that like button if you have not as of yet. So YouTube thinks people like me. Slider away. My order fouls it off. Breaking ball there. Line to second. Hornsby has it. There's one away. Bob Gibson has needed this start. Dan Gibson, Joe ERA over Ray. five through his first four starts of the season. Still waiting for Gibson to put up the regular season numbers that he has put up in the postseason. He has been exceptional in the playoffs over the first two years of the FSBL. Fastball at the top of the zone doesn't get the call. Gibson glares in. <laughs> that was funny. He just stood there staring at home. Gibson not happy with not getting that one. He gets that one. It's two and one. If you're Bob Gibson. You know you've struggled a little bit so far this season. You do not need an umpire screwing you out of a strike call. Nina fights that one off. The count goes to two and two. Fox and fires. Two seamer away. Nina gets just a piece of it to stay alive. Breaking ball, Vina puts it out towards the gap. Langford's giving it a run. He'll get there. Nice play, Ray Langford. And there's two away. Langford got a good break on that one. Now here's Prince Fielder. Fielder is over two. He has flown out and grounded out. The burly designated hitter for the Brewers. Slider there. He is way out in front. It's 0-1. Fastball there is taken. That'll even the count. Gives it into the line. Delivers fielder. Smokes that one with foul. Gibson has only gone above 16 pitches in one inning so far. 1-2 offering. Slider inside, and Fielder is put down with ease there by Gibson. Pulls him badly on that one. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Cardinals five, Brewers nothing. Oh, very cool, Bernie. I love that. That is good stuff. Here's Ripper Collins. Collins one for two. He's accounted for the only run that Mize didn't account for with an RBI double earlier on. Bill Castro will stay on for a second inning of work. Nope. Fastball misses up high. Fastball misses up high again. It's 2-0. and That's funny. I've been thinking. So generally how I've always done this is I sim the week to the Sunday. And then I pick the best game, or now this year I'm doing an AL and an NL game of the week. So the two best games on the schedule each Sunday. But the thing that that means is that I virtually never do a night game. Because they're, they're virtually all day games on Sunday. So I might start making Saturday the day I work off of, and there will at least be a few more night games than what is uh, traditionally traditionally the case. So uh, you know, we can mix some night games into the, into the schedule a little bit. Slap down a third. Collins is set aside. There's one away. I still remember that there was a shot that, that Bernie posted a while back 
And if I remember right, and Bernie can correct me on this, but I think he had like his lap, his computer screen up and like two iPads or a computer screen, a TV and an iPad set up on a desk. And he was watching me, Ron Juckett and someone else like at the same time. <laughs> I was like, that's just very, very cool. Two and all the count. Castro working to Ken Boyer here. Shot. Hold foul down the left field line and out of play. Sinker on the outside corner. It's two and two. Bernie, I hope your wife has some hobbies that she really loves too, my friend. Because <laughs> she's got a lot of patience for how much time you spend in this hobby. But that is that is awesome stuff. Skied out to center, Thomas tracks it down. And there's two away. Up next for the Cardinals, the left fielder, Ray. So here's Ray Langford. Langford is 0 for 2. Hold down to first. Scott has it. He'll take it himself. And the side is retired. So a nice job by Bill Castro. Here in the 6th. We'll head to the top of the 7th at Bush. It is 5-0 St. Louis. Thomas Yountenalu will try to get something going for the Brew Crew. Thomas 0 for 2. A pair of ground outs. The center fielder. Store. Hey, can we get to May 1st? If things don't change for the Brewers, we're going to start seeing some roster moves, I think. But they've just got nothing going on. Curveball misses down low. <laughs> Todd. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, with me working nights and my wife working days, like, we just kind of have a set kind of routine so i do a lot of the stuff during the day but i have my routine you know i get up i take my son to school the one who's still actually in you know in high school take him to school i go to the gym and then if there's any errands i need to run i run them then in one shot i come home i take care of your know, dishes or laundry whatever other household chores you know need to get done at that point take my dog out for a walk and then whatever time i have after that until work is mine. Uh, so that's why, like, I'm available in this time slot a lot. Um, you know, I mean, I will be pre I pre record some stuff, but, you know, I'm, this is usually when I record my games at some point, whether I'm going live or, uh, you know. That <laughs> sounds familiar to that gym part. But, my friend, I need the gym. I need, I need the gym. She doesn't understand Legends watching yet. Well, Todd, you know, it takes some convincing. Fire something pretty. Create a Legend Sports Universe t-shirt you can give her. I'm sure that'll go over brilliantly. 2-0 <laughs> the count here as Gibson works the out. Down 0 for 2. High fastball misses. It's 3-0. So now you got to kind of wonder, if you're the Cardinals, Gibson has struggled. He's been terrific today, but he's struggled throughout the season. Do you take Gibson out on some kind of a high note here before he gets into trouble? The 87 pitches itself, certainly no problem for Bob Gibson. You're in a comfortable position at the moment. Of course, if you actually tried to take Gibson out in that situation, he'd probably punch you. He's worked it back full here against Yount. Gibson will probably get to stay in until he gives up a run. It's a peek at the runner again. Payoff pitch to Yount. Line drive, that's a base hit. That's going towards right center. Edmonds is going to cut it off on the backhand, but that'll be a double for Yount. Runner being waved around. Cutoff man is missed. 
Thomas scores easily there. It's an RBI double for Robin Yount, who again has been just about the only bright spot for the Brewers throughout these first three weeks. And the Brewers are on the board. <laughs> that's also pretty. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of good stuff going on, you know. And, and I'm I'm trying to get back into being able to tune into other people's stuff a bit more, too. You know, I was kind of out of the loop with everything. But when I was doing the Madden project, it was basically anytime I had free time, that I was involved in building that. So I'm trying to, in addition to getting back to streaming myself on a somewhat regular schedule, I'm trying to get back into watching other people's stuff too. Um, so for the Cardinals, we're going to go and see. All right, they do. All right, they just started bullpen action. McDaniel and Morrell are out there. That's fine. Still a 5-1 game. Gibson is going to at least try to get himself through the seventh game. Here's Felipe Alou. That one's down in the dirt. Blocked nicely by Molina. Snap throw. A little bit off target. Hornsby wasn't expecting Molina to do that. Lucky for Molina, he didn't throw that one into center. So nobody out. Yount on second. The Brewers can try to make a dent here. A loop fouls it off. Final in New York. Sandy Koufax, a complete game shutout, striking out 10 as the Dodgers down the Mets at Shea. Dodgers currently in first place in that NL West. Expect them and the Giants to have a dogfight this season. Kenny Lofton leading the American League in hitting at this point, batting 420. Eddie Murray, Jose Ramirez, Ken Griffey Jr., and Eddie Collins round out the top five in the American League batting. 2-2 offering here from Gibson to a loop. That one's pulled foul. Mark McGuire has taken over the American League home run lead with eight. Shoeless Joe Jackson, Don Baylor, Frank home run Baker with seven. Evan Longoria and a few others have six. Fastball up and in. The count goes full. George Scott waits on deck. Shoeless Joe Jackson and Don Baylor are tied for the AL lead in RBIs right now with 19. Another one fouled off by Alou. Good at bat here. Evan Longoria has 18 RBIs. Jeff Bagwell and Reggie Jackson, 70. Now three weeks in, just started running the leaderboards along the crawl there. Goes away. Alou drives this one out to right. Going back on it. Drew has a play. Puts it away. For out number one, Yount will tag and go to third. The first base is number five. So that'll bring up George Scott. Scott one for two. He singled in the fifth. Houston looks in. And delivers. Fastball right down the heart. Swung on and missed. American League ERA leader George Ewell has been terrific for the Indians. Tigers rookie schoolboy row. Kevin Apier. Frank Tanana, who threw a gem here on the channel last night. And Jeff Russell as a reliever has qualified. How about that? Let's you know how the Rangers pitching is that a reliever is qualified for the ERA title. Fastball swung on and missed. It's 0-2 to Scott. That was pitch number 100 from Bob Gibson. Gibson would desperately want to try to get through seven. Here. Down in the dirt. Nicely blocked by Molina. One and two. High fastball. Scott fouls it off. 22 pitches this inning for Gibby. National League, Willie Mays leads the league. 416. Pete Runnels 
perfect year so far for Arizona at 390. Ernie Lombardi, Bob Elliott, and Rogers Hornsby round out the batting leader. Yeah, George Scott kind of got the early George Scott busy. As, <laughs> as Gibson fans him here. Fourth strikeout for Gibson, two outs in the seventh. So Willie Mays, the reigning National League Most Valuable Player, currently in triple crown position here. Three weeks into year three of the FSBL as he looks to repeat. Hard stuff inside. Here's Carlos Gomez. Gomez is old for one. Fastball in there for a called strike. Gibson from the set. Good slider there. Gomez out in front. And so now Gibson is ahead of Gomez, 0-2. Going to try to put him away and end this one. At least end the seventh. Oh, do pitch. Fastball locks him up on the outside corner. Gibson finishes with authority. Got to believe that'll be it for Bob Gibson. But he allows one run over seven, only three hits, and strikes out the last two men to face him to leave Robin Yount stranded on third. Seventh inning stretch time here in St. Louis. It's 5-1 Cardinals. Here's Yadi Molina. Molina is 0 for 2. Bill Castro still staying on. Double digits watching on a weekday morning, early afternoon. Very appreciative of your time, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Castro takes a look in at Luke Roy. Fastball outside, it's one and one. Ricky Bonus and Scott Carl throwing in the Brewers' bullpen. One one offering. Fastball at the knees, it's one and two. It's Sandy Kopax leading the National League in strikeouts. Ergie Jenkins, Clayton Kershaw, Dazzy Vance, and Dizzy Dean round out the top five. Fastball misses down low. It's two and two. High fastball. Molina fouls it straight back. Breaking ball on the outside corner, strike three. Yachty doesn't like the call. He's hoping he gets that same pitch when he's behind the plate. Kind of a floating slider there from Castro. But he gets the nod. One away, here's Ozzy. Ozzy's 0 for 3. First pitch swing, Smith lofts one down the right field line and a foul. I gotta fix Ozzy's face. I can make him look better than that. Pops this one down the left hand side. That one will find the seats. Oh, and two the count. Castro delivers. Smith down the right field line, just foul. That looked like it was earmarked for extra bases into the corner. Hold the first. Scott snags it. It's kind of a soft liner there. Boomer with the grab, and there's two down. So here's J.D. Drew, one for three, a single and a run score. I don't have any idea why the game changed J.D. Drew's number. He's worn seven with no problem for the first two years. Ground ball the first. Scott has it. He'll take it himself. And the side is retired. So overall, a very good job by Bill Castro out of the Brewers' bullpen. 
The offense, not so much. We head to the top of the eighth. It is 5-1 Cardinals, and Bob Gibson has been sent out to start the top of the eighth. So clearly, Gibson intimidating someone in the dugout. All right, so since the game let him start the inning, I won't override that. But if he allows a base runner, we're going to take Gibson out. I thought he was done. Fastball in there for a called strike. Surely that's the conversation that happened in the Cardinals' dugout. Gibson saying, why are you taking me out? I struck the last two I faced. O2 pitch here from Gibson. Fastball fouled off. So Todd B, like if you're if you're in here, I know we had this conversation last night during the Mariners Angels game about the pitch count. You'll see like it'll let Gibson go. It pulled Honeycutt earlier in that game last night because Honeycutt, even though he was throwing well, doesn't have Gibson's stamina. But it has no problem with Gibson throwing well and going beyond like 110 pitches. Number seven. Worked very, very hard with ratings and sliders and stuff like that to try to get it where it would let the top pitchers, who were guys who really went deep into games, go deep into games. Oh, absolutely, Dan. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. Fastball there at the knees. Four strike one. And you know Gibson again. Gibson struggled through those first four starts. But Bob Gibson is not out here looking to be protected. Don't know, just get him out on a high note and that kind of stuff. He wants to finish what he started here. As Dan Burke notes, in the hole, Ozzy can't come up with it. Tough play. I don't know if he would have had him anyway. But any ball that Ozzy Smith reaches that he doesn't snag kind of takes you by surprise. So it's a one-out single. And with a pair of lefties coming up, we are going to we are going to take. Oh, and they don't have a they don't have a left. Oh, that may change it. They don't even have a lefty warming up. Well, Morel and McDaniel. McDaniel's been really good. Yeah, we're gonna do it. Sorry, Gibby, but I thought he was done after seven. Now that he's allowed a base runner, we're gonna we're gonna have them get get him out of here. So Gibson exits. It's a tip of the cap to the St. Louis crowd, and he's gonna hope that Lindy McDaniel won't gag this up for him. McDaniel, 1.62 earned run average so far this season. He's 0-1. This will be his ninth appearance. Runner on. Would go. Oh, let's see. Let's move. Oh, that's right. Herboski is the only lefty in their bullpen. That's why Al Herboski has taken over the closing job from Chuck Taylor. Again, Herboski, if you remember, was outstanding in the playoffs a year ago. We'll let Matt Morris go warm up along with the rookie Todd Worrell. So now here's Fernando Vina. Oh, Justin Verlander, the rookie, a complete game shutout for the Tigers. Vina skies this one to right, coming on, long run. Drew gets there, puts it away for out number two. Now the designated hitter. Jose Fernandez made that terrific start for the Marlins earlier. A complete game, one hit shutout. Man, the Cubs are terrible. You know, and the Cubs are kind of in the Pirates kind of boat where they have gotten a miserable draw offensively too, but the Pirates are kind of pulling it together and making it work, and the Cubs just have not been able to. Or Tex Ags, but this Cubs stink. Here's Prince Fielder, Fielder 0 for 3. Rips that one to center. Edmonds coming on, makes the play. That one, you could have hung clothes on that rope. But it reaches Edmonds, snags it. Edmonds, 
Gibson's day is done. Seven and a third. He allows one. McDaniel comes in to get out of the inning. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Scott Carl will come in for his 11th appearance for the Brewers. Carl's been terrific so far this year. 1.46. He will try to keep this game in check. As our good friend Dwayne Marks in the house. How are you, Dwayne? I hope all is well with you, sir. 16 watching. On a weekday season. afternoon, that is good stuff, fellas. Good stuff. I appreciate it immensely. Always more fun to do these broadcasts when I have you guys around to chat with. Here's Hornsby. Chopper to third. Grabbed by Molitor. Throws the first. There's one away. Yeah, Dwayne, that came. That was a fun one. That was a fun one last night. Mariners and Angels. Don't spoil it if anyone wants to go back and watch that one. But that was, uh, yeah, that was a that was a good one. Banana and, and Rick, Honey, Rick Honeycutt's been good for the Mariners. Banana has been terrific for the Angels. Angels right now are lockstep with the A's in that AL West. I don't think that'll continue. I see Ricky Bonus and Brent Suter throwing for the Brewers as Johnny Mize steps in, and this has been the Johnny Mize show. Three for three, two homers, four RBIs for Mize. Puts that one down the right field line, but foul. There you see those Pittsburgh Pirates, 17 and 5. Best record in baseball to this point. Breaking ball there, grounded to second. Vina has it. And they finally set Mize aside. There's two away. Fernando Vina, who's very happy Albert Bell isn't in the league as of yet. Here's Jim Edmonds. Edmonds one for three. He is six for ten in the series. Any of you guys have streams going on later today, feel free to drop in the chat. Curve ball there from Carl. That's a nice pitch. In there for a called strike. Fastball at the top of the zone. It's 0-2. There's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Palm ball from Carl gets Edmonds. Nicely done out of the bullpen from Scott Carl. So we'll head to the top of the ninth here in St. Louis. Cardinals will look to close it out and make a winner out of Gibson. It's 5-1 St. Louis. Lindy McDaniel will stay on. It's not a safe situation. So for now, Al Herboski will keep seated in the bullpen. Here's Gorman Thomas. Thomas is 0 for 2. First pitch change up from McDaniel in for a called strike. Big curveball there misses. It's one and one. Thomas down the right field line, slicing. That'll find the seats in foul ground. The Mariners have rallied back to overtake the Yankees. They trailed that game 3-0. They now lead 5-4. Big curveball from McDaniel. This is outside. Two and two the count. Fastball in there for a called strike. Down goes Thomas, and there's one away. Reds have taken the lead over the Pirates. 4-2 in the 8th. Ernie Lombardi has gone deep for the Reds. Lombardi off to a fantastic start for Cincinnati. Here's Robin Yount. Yount 1 for 3. He drove in the only Brewers run to this point. Fastball from McDaniel was in for a call of strike. Fastball there, misses its one and one. Rookie Del Crandall has hit his second home run in the year for the Braves. You saw that. Fastball up high, it's two and one.
Daniel Roxon fires. Change up up high. It's three and one. Felipe Alou waits in the on deck circle. If the out reaches, got to think that Herboski will at least start throwing for St. Louis. Down. Pulls that fastball foul, and the count goes full. Gets the sign from Molina. Daniel delivers. Now fouls it off. Daniel looks in. And up the middle, Yao with a base hit. Second hit of the game for Yao. Trying to get something going late here for the Brewers. 5-1 game, runner on. That'll get Hraboski to start throwing out in the pen. Lou steps in. He will sit. Sit Rosenthal down. And get Raboski up and throw. So here's Felipe Alou. He's one for three. Breaking ball. In there for a called strike. Alou doubled back in the second. He's batting 244. Daniel takes a peek at Yount over at first, comes inside with the changeup. It's one and one. There you see Herboski, the lefty. Worrell, the righty. Herboski has been the setup man for two years. But his dominant postseason performance last year got him to take the job over Chuck Taylor here for year three. Up in foul ground. Falls harmlessly. It's two and two. <laughs> yeah, Clue, it's been a rough history for those two. Base hit up the middle. So the Brewers keep hope alive. Yount holds it second. There's two men on with one out. Felipe Alou puts one back through the box. So now, George Scott is due up, and they're not going to wait. Wow, I didn't even have to do that. The game does it. Al Herboski is going to come in and try to put a close on this. Six for six and save opportunities this year. 1.5 earned run average. The man Hungarian will face George Scott. Scott's one for three. Fourth ball off the plate. It's one and oh. Not a lot going on on this Brewers bench as far as pinch hit options. I don't know if I remember right. Tommy Harper is there. Bob Coluccio. Like, you know, we're not exactly trotting out the murderer's row. Or even Harvey's wall bangers on that bench. Fastball up high. Scott misses 2-1. and one. Scott can be doubled up if Herboski can get him on the ground here. Fly ball to the left. That's going to carry a bit, but it'll stay in the yard. Lankford's underneath it. Makes the grab. And there's two away. The Brewers are down in their final out. So that'll bring up Carlos Gomez. Gomez is 0 for 2. A walk and a stolen base. He's only hitting 200. Let's see who else is on that Brewers bench. Just to see if there's anybody who makes sense. Oh, you got Greg. Oh, you got Greg Vaughn and Villar over there. Yeah, I think Greg Vaughn is the call here. Oh man, so Greg Vaughn will come in to try to keep things aligned for the Brewers. 
Hey, two fifty. Whoop. Oh, let's put it back to computer control. There we go. Raboski against Vaughn. Vaughn has not hit a homer yet this year, but he is a powerful bat. First pitch fastball off the outside corner. It's one and off. And last night's stream here on the channel, as Dwayne Marks noted, had a big pinch hit home run from Raul Labanez for the Mariners. Greg Vaughn would love to replicate that. 2-0 the count. Bosky delivers. Vaughn fouls it straight back. That was not a great location there. Abosky got away with one. 2-1 pitch. Fastball swung on and missed, and the Brewers are down in their final strike. Crowd on their feet here at Bush. Raboski delivers. High fastball. Vaughn takes its 3-2. Jonathan Lucroy scheduled to be the next hitter. He represents the tying run. Raboski will try to keep it from getting to that point. 3-2 pitch. Vaughn, fly ball to right. Drew is there. Puts it away, the ball game is over, and the Cardinals complete the three-game sweep of the Brewers here at Bush with a 5-1 victory. Johnny Mize, two homers, five RB four RBIs. Bob Gibson allows one run over seven and a third. A nice, tidy victory for the Cardinals. Gibson improves to three and two. Brandon Woodruff falls to 0-4. Al Hraboski, still a perfect 7-for-7 seven seven in save opportunities for the Redbirds. There you see Mize going deep. The big cat, as Beatles eternally noted. Frank, Frank again. There's Ripper Collins, who accounted for the only other run with an RBI double. I appreciate that, Dwayne. Thank you, my friend. There's Robin Yount. Yount trying to single-handedly carry the Brewers, and it's just not working out well for him. Your final line score, five runs, eight hits, no errors for St. Louis. One run, six hits, no errors for Milwaukee. Johnny Mize gets player of the game honors. And three for four, two homers, a double four RBIs. A pair of runs scored as well, obviously, on the homers. Bob Gibson, seven and a third, four hits, five strikeouts, two walks, one run. Perhaps this will be the start that gets Gibson into a group. Brandon Woodruff struggles continue. No wonder he looks so angry in that picture. Four and two thirds, six hits, two strikeouts. He didn't walk anybody, but he allowed five runs. Two for four for Yount, two for four for Felipe Alou. Pretty much the extent of things for the Brewers. Rogers Hornsby stays hot, two for four. Nice, tidy victory for the Cardinals. Appreciate that, Bernie. So the next broadcast, I don't know if it'll be late tonight or tomorrow, the American League game of the week will be the Oakland A's starting Rube Waddell as they head into Houston. Christian Javier will get the start for the Houston Astros. Again, Rube Waddell, the pitcher of the year in year one in the American League. Waddell. Kind of an up-and-down season in year two. And he's kind of started this season up and down a bit as well. So Waddell will try to follow Gibson's form here and right his ship in the American League Game of the Week. Until then, very appreciative, as always, of you guys tuning in. Bernard Strom Sports Replays, Dwayne Marks was here as well. Big Clue, Dan Burke, Todd B. Luminaries abound. In the crowd, Beatles Eternally was here. Aaron Reed as well. Let me see, scroll back, make sure I did not. 007 was here, right? Yep, 007 was here early on in addition. So, once again, greatly appreciate it, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, whether you are at work or at home. And hopefully, I will see you later on, if not in one of my streams, in one of you guys' fantastic streams on your awesome channels. Appreciate it, guys. Be good to each other. We'll talk soon. The Cardinals take down the Brewers 5-1. to one.